Well, I'm not working today. Um, well, I sort of am. Uh, the reason being, it, it's just absolutely, it's one of those days where what we're doing, we just can't get nothing done. And um, it's just too wet, just far too wet. So what I'm doing is um, seeing a client this morning that we've done some work before and they're very, very nice. And um, it's always a bit of a, an anti-climax in some respects when you finish the job because you've left it. And certainly with this client, uh, I've become friends with him and it's worked well and it's remained professional. There's always those moments with, with everyone and I think it's important today to pop over, make use of this day and go back and see him and uh, just see how he's getting on. He's got a lot of other things going on um, over on this uh, job where we worked in his home, lots of other stuff. And he asked me if I wanted to get involved in some of it, but I just wasn't available at the time. And I don't think he was totally happy about that, which is unfortunate uh, because he wanted me to do it, but I just couldn't fit him in. But um, I'm going to go back and see him this morning and um, hopefully it's all good. Oh yes, and uh, I'm taking some flowers for his lovely wife because I think you should. You know, as, as uh, contractors, anybody actually using the roads today, and when you have to move around multiple times during the day from the project that you're actually working on, it takes up so much time. You know, can you imagine how much time is lost? How much time is lost through the course of the year and lost revenue because of the roads? This is when you start thinking, you start getting political about things, and yeah, we need infrastructure. But there's always going to be times across those country roads where those roads are never going to be expanded simply because of where they are but they need to do something because we're losing billions and billions probably every day well we've arrived and it's started to snow now Just wanted to show you the um, the project that I was going to do, but I just couldn't fit uh, fit the job in. But you can see uh, they've started to come round here now, and uh, it's quite a bit of work. But I just couldn't fit it in the time. Uh, but they still haven't done it, so that's the other thing. Which is that's fine. It's no problem at all. Um, I've got a great relationship with this client, and uh, pray it continue. A video. What have you got there, Richard? What is it? I've got a beautiful old-fashioned. Uh, pure teak uh, lavatory seat come out of the church it's been stripped of its awful old brown varnish it's been teak oiled it's going to be lightly satin stained and it's going to go back in with a new level a new uh, lavatory with a high level cistern and victorian basin it is the dog's bollocks this is a funny yeah this is a funny video to actually show this at the moment but you've got this real feel for all good things old and, and quality, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, and because the seat is so heavy, if someone drops a seat, so it doesn't smash the pan, I've got some some automatic donuts here, so which will cushion it. Automatic so, donuts? Yes, yeah, they came from the classic car show used for exhaust gas, uh, for exhaust systems. And so these donuts will stop it damaging the lavatory pan. Are you are you looking forward to parking yourself on that? It's beautiful. It's so comfy. I sat down and tried it out and checked the height and everything. Perfect. But you need to have a double O bum for it to work properly. A double O. A double O bum or O one. Anything smaller than that, and you'll fall in it. <laughs> well, oh yeah, okay. Show that much better. Right. Here we go, Rich. Yes. Tell me about this. Well, I bought it at the Classic Car Show. It's uh, obviously a, a British Oxford and Company oxyacetylene regulator set that has been uh, obviously modified with a timing uh, a, a timing gear as a base and made into a retro lamp to fit into the uh, vestry bar. So just just briefly, because you know people are going to be watching this now, can you explain very briefly what are you doing? Well, I'm renovating a, an old Methodist chapel that I bought and um, I make it into a venue for special occasions, golden weddings, meetings, uh, 
bric-a-brac sales, um, wine tasting and so on. And within the, uh, within the chapel, uh, the, bar, the vestry is being turned into a vestry bar um, for refreshments. So all of this is part of the new uh, look. And this, in fact, is the lavatory sheets going back into the vestry lavatory. Right, fantastic. So there we go. Right. Look, we, we're showing a few items now and uh, people, I think, are, are starting to get the idea. You like all good things, all quality things, don't you? Quality. Yes, and, and old-fashioned engineering. And this, we've got a, 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 a window that pivots open and it has this beautiful old Victorian a rack and uh, a worm and worm wheel drive which drives the window open and it's beautiful and therefore a high level window can be opened and closed if you like remotely by a long cord going down to the ground and it was completely rusted and filled up with paint it's been cleaned i've greased it we've got the the, the worm wheel uh, we've got the pinion and the rack and it's a beautiful beautiful system and very clever and you can't get these now and it'd be a travesty to change that. So that's going to be put back into the window, which the window will be reconditioned and will open and close high level through this beautiful mechanism. Uh, beautiful, I mean, just too good. They just don't make it like this anymore. Too expensive. I think the thing that's obvious though is you can see your passion about this sort of thing. Yes, it is because it's engineering, it's Victorian engineering at its best when it was quality and not about price. And this is beautiful, this lovely worm wheel and rack. So there you go. Ooh, it's a cold one. Uh, yeah, just uh, went and seen Richard and uh, Chan and uh, great people. And uh, that's what happens sometimes. You, you build um, relationships up with customers sometimes because they've invited you into their home. But now we're gonna have a look at the patio. Well, you are. That's looking a, a bit dirty there because I'm having some work done here. Pressure washed off, but there we are. Looking lovely. And they've had some parties on here. There's a lot of work going on here. Well, this is what I do on my days off. I'm in uh, Chepstow Garden Centre now, I've left Weston, and um, I'm going to have a look for an espalier. Well, as per usual, the phone has not stopped ringing. I've been in here for an hour now. Alison's been calling me, and she probably wants to know where I am, but I want to show you what I've got over here. We have in here, we have some uh, succulents and some um, trailer ivies and some brassicas there and some cyclamen, some ferns, some ajuga over there. And I'm not quite sure what that one is called. That's called uh, Lysmachia aurea. So it's like a, a trailing plant, the Latin names, eh? And I've got uh, a Japanese quince there. So I'm gonna be showing you what I'm gonna be doing with this very, very soon.